Hello everybody, in this episode of The Dark Room, we will be talking about Skinwalker Ranch and the valley that it sits in. So let's do a deep dive into it. Skinwalker Ranch, located in the Unita, Unita Basin in Utah. This paranormal hotspot boasts claims of flying saucers, mysterious lights, and unknown illnesses shape-shifting monsters and just about everything else you can think of. It's so well known that there have been several books written about the property and it's even a subject of a History Channel show. But first, before we start talk about the Skinwalker Ranch, we gotta talk about the Unita Basin, which also has lots of lore and creepy and weird things going on. So the, the basin is a region located in northeastern Utah in the United States. It is characterized by its unique geological features including the Unita Mountains to the north and the Travaputs Plateau to the south. Like many regions with a rich history a cultural and cultural heritage, it has its own share of local lore and legends. While these stories may not be as well known as some of the more fam famous urban legends and myths, they provide insight into the history, culture, and traditions of the area. Here are just but a few examples of the lore. Skinwalkers, uh, they're not unique to the Unita Basin, but there may be lo local variations or stories related to these witches or sorcerers in the area. These uh, skinwalkers pop up a lot in the uh, basin, apparently. Uh, skinwalker legends are associated with dark and harmful magic, and they're also considered taboo in a Navajo culture. So skinwalkers are, they, they shapeshift, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later on when we get into the skinwalker ranch, but apparently they're all over the basin as well. Uh, the rugged and remote terrain of the Unitom Basin has historically made it a suitable hiding spot for outlaws and fugitives. Stories of hidden caches of stolen goods and secret hideouts of famous outlaws like Butch Cassidy and the Wild Bunch have circulated in the region. With these hideouts, uh, there claims lost treasure in the region. It has its fair share of lost treasure tales. These stories often involve hidden gold mines, buried loot, or caches of valuable hidden away by early settlers, native makers, and even treasure hunters. So the Ute tribe has a strong historical and cultural presence in the basement. Basement? What? In the basin. Their stories and legends are an integral part of the lore and the region and may include tales of legendary figures like skinwalkers, creation myths, and stories related to the natural futures of the area. We will get into the natural futures of the area in the end, but it has a lot of, uh, a lot of geological gastures or geysers or whatever, a lot of gases leaking up through the ground there's a lot of oil there but we'll get that we'll get into that soon enough some regions are associated with sightings of cryptids in the basin or creatures whose existence is disputed while the basin doesn't have a prominent cryptid legend there have been some reports of unusual and unexplained animal sightings in the remote areas this also may contribute contribute to the skinwalker uh, tales because skinwalkers uh, can shapeshift and do anything and most of the time they're very big wolves like many places with a long history the Unita Basin has its fair share of ghost stories and reports of haunted locations these stories often involve old buildings mining towns or places with a history of tragedy which these old mining towns, they'll have a lot of tragedy in them. 
The basin also is home to numerous petroglyphs and rock art created by Native American tribes over thousands of years. Some of these petroglyphs have been the subject of interpret in interpretation and speculation. I don't know what that word. Adding to the lore and mystery of the region. All right, let's get in to Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, some of this stuff is kind of kind of crazy, but uh, the, oh, the earliest known inhabitants of Skinwalker Ranch, the land beneath it, uh, played a big part in this ominous, om, ominous name. I don't know how to sp I don't know how to talk today, but we're gonna keep going. Uh, the property lies on land traditionally inhabited by the Ute tribe, but the term Skinwalker comes from Navajo legend and translate to, by means of it, it goes on all fours. That would explain why it shifts, shifts into big giant wolf. In Navajo culture, skinwalkers are evil witches with the ability to shapeshift into any animal or human. The skinwalker legend is not well understood outside of Navajo culture, but what little is known about it by outsiders enough to inspire scary stories of all varieties. One such story involves a Ute tribe. The legend goes that during a time of hostili hostility between the Utes and Navajo, members of the Navajo decided to unleash skinwalkers upon their enemies. And it says that those skinwalkers stole stock to the land today. So now we're gonna get into the Shermans who uh, bought this piece of land, thinking that they would uh, lay up, settle home, settle down, and relax out in the out in the countryside. So the idea of shape-shifting witches in the present-day Unitom basement basin might be hard for some to believe, but not for the Sherman family who purchased the ranch in 1994 with the intention of settling down and relaxing in their new country home. The Shermans experienced a lot of spooky and crazy stuff during their time at the ranch, most notably with something matching the description of a skinwalker. One night, Terry Sherman heard a noise outside and was startled to see a wolf in his yard. A wolf much larger than any he had ever seen. So Terry grabbed his gun from inside and shot the wolf several times. But his bullets appeared to do no damage whatsoever. Although the wolf did take off eventually, its tracks disappeared entirely as Terry chased it, as if it had simply vanished into thin air. Could have been an ancient skinwalker that scared them that night. One thing's for certain, it was far from the only scare that the Shermans got during their time there. During their years at the ranch, they reported seeing various kinds of flashing lights and mysterious objects in the sky. That's UFOs. UFOs are unidentified flying objects. They also saw strange circles in their fields, mysterious voices floating overhead, and countless cattle mutilations. So the cattle mutilations is just their body would be full with like a little hole inside and everything else would be gone. So all the insides, organs, and guts and everything will be gone. The Shermans decided to sell the property before it was too late. They sold the ranch in 1996, just two years after they had bought it. So something must have been going crazy. They, they saw some crazy stuff where they decided to sell two years later. So now we're going to get into Robert Bigelow and the NIDSCI. It's a big name. Who would be stupid enough to buy a haunted ranch? Well, someone with a lot of money. He was into that kind of thing, of course. And that was Robert Bigelow. 
Just a year earlier, in 1995, he had founded the National Institution of Discovery Science to fund research on UFOs and the paranormal. The Sherman's Nightmare Ranch was Bigelow's playground, and in 1996, the eccentric millionaire bought Skinwalker, Skinwalker Ranch and made it a research hub of the NIDSCI. Of course, one of the main points that skeptics will make about Skinwalker Ranch is that most of the evidence for paranormal activity on the ranch comes from the Shermans, who sold it to a millionaire. So some people say that the Shermans made up this story to get tons of money, which that could be the case. Known for his interest in UFO research, uh, they, uh, the Shermans could have faked cow mutilations and invested, invented tales of wolfmen to entice Bigelow to buy the place or another buyer with a lot of money. It is an interesting theory, though, however, the Shermans didn't exactly milk Bigelow for all he was worth. The Shermans sold the ranch for about $200,000, which was an average price for a home in that day. And certainly a low price for a 500 acre ranch. Their behavior seems less in line with people trying to turn a profit or more like folks who are just trying to get the heck out of Dodge. Oh, we'll be diving deep into the, uh, the Dodge, I mean, the Dodge City. Because that's where the, uh, the line, uh, comes from. So, you're asking, what did Bigelow and the NID CSI find? Well... If they found any defini definitive world changing evidence of UFOs or alien life, well, they kept it to themselves. What they did find that, that we know of was much more, was much the same as the uh, Shermans. Research researchers have shared stories of mysterious creatures with odd otherworldly eyes that shone through the dark. They also found cattle mutilations, including one that occurred in broad daylight, less than an hour after they had seen the cow alive and healthy. This was also noteworthy because there was a complete lack of blood surrounding the cow, even though it had been almost completely disemboweled. That would be a scary sight to see. Something that I, something that I don't want to see. NIDC... SCI's stories definitely add to the mysterious mystery of Skinwalker Ranch. But with years of research and millions in funding, you might expect that they'll find something more, but they didn't. The lack of evidence could serve as evidence itself. On many occasions, these expensive audio and visual equipment failed to capture what several eyewitnesses had clearly seen, from large animals to flying orbs in the sky. NID SCI disbanded in 2004, but maintained ownership of the property until 2016. When Skinwalker Ranch finally did change hands, it was passed off to a group that would experience a lot of the same uh, mysteries and frustrations as the NID SCI. So now we're going to get on to Brandon Fugel and the History Channel. So in 2016, when Bigelow sold the ranch to, to a buyer who wished to remain nominates for a whopping four years, Brandon Fugel was the owner of the Skinwalker Ranch, and he announced in 2020 that he was the mysterious owner and that the History Channel would be recru recording a rea reality TV show on the property titled The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Which is currently on season four, apparently. I did not know the show existed, and I might have to watch it after this. So, the secret of Skinwalker Ranch show uh, the show portrays Fugel's attempt to bring scientific approaches to the mysterious surroundings that the ranch has, surrounded by a team of experts in a range of scientific dis disciplines. 
as well as a guy named Dragon. That's a, that's a weird name. Fugle seeks out seeks answers to the questions that he had countless he and countless others have asked over the years. If it sounds a lot like NIDSCI, because it is. Is this reality reality TV wasn't popular in 1996? Like so many investigators before them, the current occupants of Skinwalker, Skinwalker Ranch have found more questions than answers. Why does electronic equipment seem to malfunction on the ranch? Why have so many people reported unexplained illnesses? Why does the indescribable feeling of strangeness they feel on the ranch seem to follow them home? Why is there a guy named Dragon? Well, who knows? Did, 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 like, did he give himself a nickname or people just call him it? Anyways, we're going to go into other local tales from the ranch. So the inhabitants of Skinwatch Ranch may have reported slightly different stories over the years. But they do have a few things in common that are hard to shake. Most notable is a strong conviction that what they're seeing is a real deal. And it is shared by many others in the area. Since the 1950s, there have been hundred rep- hundreds of reports of UFOs and unexplained phenomena in the Unitom Basin. And not just that Skinwalker Ranch. Neighbors of the ranch reported seeing very types of bright lights in the sky. Often appearing as a shape that looks like a doorway or a portal. Other reports other reports giant flying objects what what is common as well is cattle mutilations some neighbors have reported seeing cows that appear to have been struck by lightning with no sign of scorched earth to be found one group shared a story of trying to spot ufos one night only to return to find that their car had been moved without a trace or tire tracks in the desert sand Perhaps most horrifyingly, horrifyingly, however, is the story of a group of the History Channel product, produ- production assistants who have to get coffee for Dragon every day. Yep, yeah, we still know a lot about Dragon. Also, there's other reports of uh, lightning hitting a camper van and it disintegrated. And also, in the same spot, the guy that has the van and own that property uh, put in a big giant metal c- container and it moved from north to south to I think east to west or something like that without a trace like nothing on the ground saying that it moved so he thinks that it just got picked up and then turned and then set back down and that container for a few days later was very magnetized so you could put any metal object and it will get stick right to it so here's the question what's really going on there's plenty of theories out there as to what's going on over at skinwalker ranch and you guessed it there are some pretty wild ones but the real answer is there is something going on but we don't know so theory number one People are lying to get money. So in this theory, they're likely the same people who raised their hand at the end of the class and reminded the teacher that they had homework due. It's not fun a theory at all, but it should be considered. Theory number two, extra terrestrial visitor. This one is the most common, pop, most popular theory about the, about the weirdness going on at Skinwalker Ranch. It would certainly explain a lot of things, like the bright lights, objects in the sky, strange voices, electrical disturbances, and cattle cattle mutilation with scientific precision. Theory number three, interdimensional visitors. Just like theory number two, but with a sort of the MCU twist. Rather than believing that UFOs arrived from another planet, 
many people think that this theory believes that they arrived from a parallel dimension or universe. Sounds crazy, but this would certainly explain why the lights in the sky sometimes appear to look like portals. And any kind of interdimensional gateway would be bound to cause some anomalies nearby. So theory, the last theory, theory number four, geophysical processes causing the brain to hallucinate. This one probably not true, but it could be. Developed by neuroscientist Michael Persinger, this theory posits that geo geophysical forces like tectonic shifts, seismic activity, and geomagnetic fields, and other others may affect the part of the brain involved with creating hallucinations. Under this reason, ev under this reasoning, everything people experience at Skinwalker Ranch and Valley is a result of increased seismic activity in the area. So I don't, I don't think the number four is, but it could be. There's a lot of natural gas in there, in the valley and all around the place, so that might explain some of it. But anyways, that right there is a little history of Skinwalker Ranch and Valley. Some uh, crazy stuff has happened at the ranch and in the valley, and uh, we explain most of it here today. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that little episode, and I uh, hope you leave a like, comment to uh, make uh, to the uh, suggest other places that I can uh, research into and make a little little video like this. And uh, yeah, hope you uh, guys like that. So I'll see you guys in the next episode of the Dark Room.